Let's talk about the unique difference between the small intestine and the large intestine, or the colon. Over here, we have the small intestine. So you have the stomach, small intestine. It connects with through a valve, ileocecal valve, and then the food goes through the large intestine. One thing to know about the small intestine, it's a lot longer. There's three parts. The first part is about a little more than a foot. It's between 10 and 15 inches. The next part is about eight feet. And the last part is between eight feet and 13 feet. So it's quite long. Now the colon or the large intestine is about five feet. So let's start with the small intestine. 90% of all the digestion occurs in the small intestine. Now you have enzymes that are generated from the pancreas, and you also have enzymes that are generated from the small intestine itself to help break down proteins, carbohydrates, and fat, minus the fiber. Our bodies do not have the capacity to break down fiber. We just don't have the enzymes. However, we have a lot of microbes in the large bowel that can ferment the fiber and break it down, and that's converted to uh, some really healthy things, which we'll get to. Now, in the first part of the small intestine, you have the contents of the stomach and also some of the juices from the pancreas coming out to help neutralize all the acid from the stomach. So we have a lot of digestion happening right here. We also have the absorption of iron. When someone gets surgery, as in a gastric bypass, um, they may have difficulty absorbing iron. Now, this next part is where you're gonna absorb the calcium, the magnesium, uh, some B vitamins, vitamin C, folate, and there's other nutrients as well, like trace minerals. And in the last part, you're gonna absorb and recycle bile salts. So 90% of all the bile salts will be reabsorbed. You're also gonna absorb B12. You're gonna absorb fat and the fat-soluble vitamins, as well as certain electrolytes. So 90% of all the digestion occurs in the small intestine. Now it's alkaline, which actually triggers certain enzymes. Now, if you have inflammation in the colon or Let's say you have celiac, which is damaged within the lining right through here uh, because you've consumed uh, gluten, which you're sensitive to, you're not gonna be able to absorb certain nutrients. Also, most of the friendly bacteria are in the large intestine, not the small. But when the microbes from the large intestine back up and get into the small, that's called SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And in that situation, these microbes are gonna pretty much compete with these nutrients. They're gonna eat up these nutrients, eat up your fuel, and you're gonna have nutritional deficiency. You're gonna have a lot of bloating, and that's called SIBO. I put a video down below if you want more data on that. So let's move to the large intestine. So the contents from the small intestine now are gonna enter through a little valve right here, ileocecal. It's gonna start going through this larger space, which is the colon, and the fiber is gonna to start to ferment. You're also going to get um, water absorption, fluid absorption, absorption of electrolytes, salts, potassium, which is an electrolyte. But we have a lot more bacteria going on in the large intestine. You also have a large mucus layer. So if the surface of the coal is right here, we have a layer of mucus and the microbes are on top of that. Now the pH of the colon is going to be more acidic from certain bacteria um, that are making lactic acid. And the purpose of that acid is to kill pathogens that should not be there, and, but not affect our good bacteria. Now, when this fiber is fermented, uh, where you have these microbes releasing enzymes to break down this carbohydrate, it's gonna turn into small chain fatty acids. And one is called butyrate. And butyrate actually is a preferred fuel for the colon cells, even over glucose. Butyrate also helps stabilize your blood sugars. It will give you energy and it will improve insulin resistance. All right, thanks for watching and definitely watch the next video on this page that goes more in depth on the entire cycle of digestion.